Welcome to part 14 of the Intermediate Revit course. We're going to start modeling in this interior shade, this drop down, roll down shade kind of thing, which is going to be parametric and usable in any project. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. There's still a couple things that we need to do. We need to add that furniture in the corner, as you can see there. And I also want to add in these blinds, uh, these roll down blinds or curtains or shades, whatever you want to call it, along the windows, as well as this here. I think the best way to go about this is to make a family out of it that is parametric, that we'll be able to change and place on any of these windows and doors, and we'll be able to use it in other models as well, in other projects. So I'm going to model something up like this and walk you through that process. I'm going to go over to File, and I'm going to go New Family. And we're going to choose a wall based family. So this is going to be for creating things like windows or doors, or in this case, we're going to be creating a rod with a rolled down shade on it, I guess you could call it. So I'm just going to search along and look for the metric generic model wall based. If we open this up, you'll see that this is going to be a little bit different to the normal Revit family editor that we were using the generic furniture one that we were using. But here you can see that there's already a kind of wall placed in this family. And you can see that it's showing us the placement side. So anything on this side is going to be placed on the wall. And like we did for the other Revit families, we're going to set this up with reference planes first so that we can lock things on and make this parametric. So the first thing I'm going to do is press RP to set up some reference planes. I'm going to make one on this side, doesn't matter where we place them, and then another one over here. I'm going to dimension this by pressing DI and I'm going to dimension between these and just make sure that they're equal. So I'm going to bring that out and press EQ to make those equal. Then we want to add in another dimension of this full width. I'm going to lock that in. And the reason why we create this full dimension is so that we can make a parametric value of the width of this sun shade, what I'm going to call it a shade. And we can do that by pressing escape a few times, selecting this dimension and then pressing the create parameter button up the top here. And I'm going to call this width. There we go. And now we're going to see that the width is changeable. And if we go to the family types, you can change the width from here. So if we made this 3000, you can see that it changes those and it's parametric. So now we're going to go to the placement side elevation in the project browser here and create a few more reference planes. So the top one is going to be for the top of the shade. <laughs> That's what we decided to call it, right? And then there's going to be one in the middle, which is going to be the length or the drop down of the shade. So you can see here that these can drop down. So we might have one that covers halfway and then the other one across like that. And you can see that's kind of like on these windows, one of them is fully closed and drop down and the other one is about halfway. So we want to be able to change that drop down or the height of the actual shade. So what I'm going to do is dimension from that top plane to the bottom plane. And we're going to bring this out and lock it and also create this into a parameter using that same process as before. We can call this shade drop, click OK. You can see that in your family types again, you've got the shade drop 1260, you've got the width 3000. And what we want to do as well is change the reference planes name so that they show up later. I'm going to call this one top and then this one bottom. And now what I'm going to do is go back to the reference level or the floor plan of our family. And I'm going to create the curtain rod on the top level. So if I go to the create tab, and click on extrusion. We're going to use the rectangle tool and we're going to change the extrusion end to be 50 mils. So it's going to be 50 mils in depth. What we want to do is assign a material for this curtain rod. And I might just go with something that is maybe aluminum, aluminum, we call it here in Australia. I'm going to load that into this family, apply it, click OK. And now I'm just going to draw the curtain rod from one reference plane. We're going to make sure we lock it onto there to the other reference plane. Again, we want to lock all of these so that we'll move move around with the reference plane to make it parametric. I'm going to select off of them and we're going to want to change the value of this line to 50 mils. And so if we go to a 3D view of this, you're going to see that it's currently on the ground floor and we want to set the work plane to be something else. So what we can do is click on the work plane set button up here and change this to 
reference plane top. Click OK. You're going to see that comes up to that top reference plane. I'm going to click the green tick and you should be able to see this in our 3D view. So that's our curtain rod, which is parametric at the moment by changing the width. So what that's just modeled in is this rod that sits behind or that the shade actually rolls up onto. So we want to now model up this roll of shade and we can make this intricate or we can make it simple. We're just going to make this a cylinder really and apply a material to that because that's probably going to look just as good as we need it to for the actual render. So I'm going to go to create and we're going to do a sweep. So we're first going to set the sketch path or we're going to set the path by sketching it. And rather than trying to draw this in 3D, I'm going to go back to the reference level and I'm going to select on the reference plane. We're going to make sure we lock onto those and then that's going to be our path. And what I'm going to do is just move this out about 50 mils again so that it's sitting off the wall. Now we can click the green tick because that's the path we want, but we want to add a profile to it. So I'm going to select edit profile and we're going to do this in a 3D view. And I'm just going to select that one there. You've got the profile editor. So I'm going to make this a circle. I'm going to select it from the end point there, bring it out. And I'm going to say maybe 100 mils should do the trick. And then what we want to do is go back to our reference level and make sure this is lined up in the right spot. So if we select what we've just created, you can see that would be cutting into the wall. So I'm going to move this point onto the edge of the wall so that it's not going to be cutting into the wall. It's going to be sitting flush up against the wall. So that looks pretty good. We can click the green tick and have a look what this looks like in 3D. The green tick again, that should finish that sweep. And there you can see we've got that nice little roll up. So then finally, we'll want to add in this actual shade that comes down that we can change the height of. I'm going to go to the reference level and I'm going to click create extrusion. And now what we can do is use a rectangle. We can keep the extrusion end as 50. And we're going to select this reference plane on the side here. Make sure we lock onto that and then come over to the other side and we can change the value of this later. But what we want to do is lock these planes on. There we go. And I'm going to just select this line here and change the temporary dimension to probably only four mils so that it's four mils thick. And that's changing the thickness of this actual curtain part of it with that extrusion in the height's not going to be correct and it's not going to be on the right work plane. So we want to make sure we're setting this to the top reference level. There we go. And then if we select the placement side elevation, we can click the green tick and then we can bring this down to that bottom reference plane. And we want to lock that on so that when we move this reference plane, we're also moving the curtain. So you can see the materials currently aluminum, which is not what we want, but we can have a look at it in 3D. And if we turn on the realistic shading or visual graphics, there you can see we've got our curtain, which is parametric. If we go to family types, we can actually change the shade drop. If we wanted this to be say 500, we can apply that and you can see that that's parametric and it changes. If we wanted to change the width to 2400, then we can change that and it's going to bring in the sides. So that's really the key part of doing this so that we can use it on all the windows and the doors on the back as well. But what we want to do is now add a material to it. So I'm going to select it, click on material, and I'm just going to type up fabric. And you can see that this canvas blue stripe shows up. Now I'm going to add this into the document and we're going to use this just to see what it looks like. At the moment, you can already see that's pretty close. Um, the colors aren't exactly right and the, the strips are going in the wrong direction. But I like that it's got this little fabric kind of texture to it if that's the right way to put that. So what I'm going to do is just edit this material by going to the manage tab, clicking on materials, and I'm going to edit this to make it look like how we want it to. So if I go to the appearance tab, you're going to see that it's got an image assigned to it. If we select that image, we can rotate it and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees by selecting here and pressing 90. So now they're going in a vertical direction, which is what we want. And I'm going to see if we can change the color of this using the tint. So if we select tint, you're going to see that it changes the color of it. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. It's got a gray tint on it, but it might be difficult to make this black and white. So instead, what I'm going to do is bring this into Photoshop because it's going to be a bit too difficult to try and change this with just the tint. So I'm going to turn off the tint, click apply, and then click on this image link. And then we're going to do the same process as we've done earlier in this course right click this image and go open with 
Uh, let's go to Photoshop 2021 and there you can see the fur texture we've done before. You can see that the colors are black and white. I'm just going to go to image adjustments, black and white, and that's going to make that black and white. Now I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to save this out as an image as a JPEG in this same fo uh, folder. And again, we can't save it here because it requires admin access. So I'm just gonna save it into my project files, fabric stripes. I'm gonna save that in this file. And then what we can do is move that over to our Revit project. And we've still got this screen up. So what we can do is just drag our image in from that other uh, folder that we've saved it in. So fabric stripes, I'm just gonna bring this in, continue. It's gonna ask for permission. Yes, we want to add this. And now if we open this, you're going to see that it's black and white, which is good. So I'm going to apply that. Now you can see it's black and white and it's going to look pretty darn close to this texture here. But I'm going to make this roll green because the back side of this is also green. So I'm going to change the material of this and I'm just going to type up green. Maybe there's going to be a green fabric. That would be nice. Let's have a look in this asset browser. I'm gonna press green fabric again. Sure enough, we've got a fabric green. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is create a new material and call this green fabric. And now we're gonna go back into that asset browser, type up green fabric again, just to be able to find that and add this to that image. So I'm just gonna check uh, the graphics shading settings and click use render appearance. Once we apply this, you should see that change if it's not selected, there we go. That looks pretty awesome. I think that's going to look really good. And since it's parametric, we can use that for uh, all of the windows, all of the doors. And if it's anywhere else, if we wanna use it in any other projects, we can save this out as a family, which is what I'm going to do. File, save as family. And this will be all in the project files anyways. So if you haven't followed along, you can just go ahead and just download it anyways. But you know the process yourself now, which is gonna be super handy whenever you wanna create custom stuff like this. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. I'm gonna call this roller shade, save it out. And now we're going to load this into the project. Make sure we're loading it to the right one. And now you can see that we can't place it anywhere. We can only place this on a wall and that's because we've used a wall based family template. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it. You can see that it's going to be way too wide, but the good thing is we can change that. So I'm going to select it. I actually want to see what this looks like in our 3D view in our little render here. You can see that it's definitely not what we want it to be. I'm going to actually go to the ground floor plan so we can get the width of it. So if I click on the measure tool and select from the width of that door, so that's going to be about from here to here. So about a thousand mils, we can change this to one meter. So I'm going to edit the type and change the width to 1000. I'm going to change the shade drop to about maybe 800 as well. If we apply this, click OK. Have a look in our 3D view. You can currently see that the elevation is wrong. So we're gonna to have to change the elevation from level, but the best way to do this is going to be by going into our section. And we should have a section of this wall still from previously, section five, there we go. So what I'm going to do is just um, use the move tool and bring this down into the view. And then I'm just going to align this up to about there, maybe a bit taller than that. Just gonna move the center of it to there. And you can see it's still not in line with that door. So I'm just gonna nudge this over a bit more to the door, make sure it's not overlapping with that curtain there. Move it over a tad more. There we go, let's have a look in our 3D view, see what this looks like. There we go, you can see that this roll here might be a little bit too large. Now one thing you'll notice is that the material hasn't changed or updated in this view. So I'm going to go back to my family, it should be the roller shade here. I'm going to select on that and press the material and associate this material option as a parameter. So I'm going to click new parameter down the bottom here and call this shade material. Click OK and click OK again. If we save this, this should update in our other model, but I'm just going to press load into project, reload it, and you can see that we can then overwrite the existing version. I'm going to apply that again, click OK, and there's our shade. What I'm also going to do is make this roll a little bit thinner actually a lot thinner because it's way too thick at the moment. Click edit sweep and then edit the profile of it. So we can select the profile and click edit profile. And we're gonna make this a lot less diameter, probably like maybe 30 mils. Go back to our reference level and we're going to move this flush up against that wall again. 
click OK, click OK. I'm gonna save this family again and then load it into the project. Again, overwrite the existing version and you'll see this update. That's much better. Finally, I just wanna have a look at this in the Enscape view and see what it looks like. Pretty well exactly the same as in these images, which is what we were going for. Um, if I were to design this room, I probably wouldn't use these shades. Now that I think about it, they're kind of beachy and kind of cool, which is what my mum really liked, but you know what, we've modeled it. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this around to the other side. Copy over this to the other side, probably about there. Double check the image. You can see that it's a little bit of a gap. That's probably good. And what we're going to do is change the drop down height to be different from the other one so that it it's not you know, perfectly in line, but we're going to have to duplicate the family and call this type two. Now we can change that shade drop height. Let's say we wanted this to be 320. It's a very arbitrary number. I'm going to click OK. There we go. You can see it's currently cutting through a couple of things, but in Enscape that should look all right. There we go. And there we have it. That's our blinds in for the doors. Just again, a little bit of an extra detail. We didn't have to model this in, but if you're doing an internal render like this, we want to do it properly. Just falling off the edge of the world there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add that to these windows as well. The cool thing is that this is a family, so we can just go to architecture, place a component. Being a wall-based family, we can now just place it. It's probably best to do this in a floor plan. You can see roughly where the window is there. So we're just gonna roughly place that in. Gonna go ahead and place that across all of the windows. Just gonna select all of them, change the elevation to something a little bit less so that we'll be able to see them in our, let's say 3D view. And you can see them roughly there, still sticking in the wall. So I'm gonna create a section going through and showing us an internal elevation of that wall. So here are our shades, they will need to be in line with the windows. So I'm just going to bring these down using the align tool. And we're going to align it to the top of the window and we're going to align it uh, probably to the... Yeah, just using the top there, that should be fine. And what we can do is lock that on so it moves with the window. I'm going to do that for these ones as well. Lock that on, that one there, lock that on. And we're going to need to change the width of these. So. This window here is, if we look at the images, you can see it spans across the entire window. So if we just find the width of the window, which is in here, you can see that it is currently 1200. So I'm just gonna to go to edit type and I'm going to duplicate this again to type three and change the width to 1200. Click okay or press enter. I'm gonna use the move tool to then line this up with the window. We'll also need to change the height of it. Well, this one here is about 200 mils in height. So I'm just gonna make this 200 mils. The shade drop, there we go, that looks good. And I'm going to do that for these windows as well. There we have it. We've got our cool little roll down shades in. This one's gonna have to come off the wall because it's currently cutting through uh, the wall or cutting through the window. But all in all, very good. So what I've done is just uh, cleaned up that aluminum bar a little bit and moved this extrusion off the wall just a little bit and now we're going to load this back into the project and hopefully it covers those windows. Let's have a look. There we go. So that should be the end for those little blind curtain things. I'm super stoked with how that turned out. This render is really coming along. In the next lesson, we're going to start going over some of these details and cleaning it up a bit and making some adjustments. Getting ready for the final interior render. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.